let's give everybody a little background. You, you, you had like eighteen, like like eighteen MMA fights, something something like that. Yeah, I thought I had twenty. I think it was. I thought. It was, well, okay. Anyway, twenty. So <laughs> he knows how many fights he's had. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. When you look at Sure Dog, you know the, the fight finder thing. It's not always accurate. So, right, so, right. so who knows? Um, but give us your background. How you got involved in MMA in the first place, and then we'll kind of get to where you are now. Yeah, man. Um, I think me and dude get along real well. I just like hitting people, man. Uh, yeah. Like when I was done with football, I was like, man, this I this whole football too. bro, this MMA thing was around, and and uh, you know, like we talk about when I fought the hyena, yeah. I literally had uh, I was in the Marine Corps, and I got Mario Sperry tapes, and I would fucking grab a jarhead and be like, come here, I'm gonna try this, <laughs> and I just hit, and that's and that's, I mean, my first fight was against Edwin Deweese, my very first professional fight. He was like 25 and seven. I was obviously 0 and 0. How does that get sanctioned, <laughs> bro? It was new then. Bro, 2001, yeah. man? Oh, 2001. oh, yeah. They were like, hmm, baby Godzilla, freaking 120, you're good. Man. Was, and the Nevada good. commissioner now, I didn't want to No, I wish it would prove been. anything. But, but uh, yeah, so he was still, you know, Edward Deweese was my very first fight, and then uh, the Heineken was my second. I didn't even have a team until, like, my fifth pro fight. <laughs> like, I had no coach or nothing. But, were you uh, in Georgia then? Georgia? No, no, I was, I was in the Marine Corps. I was stationed in Pensacola, and then I went to uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina okay. for a good period of time, so... It was a lot of fun. Got busted down a couple times for fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got in a lot of trouble. So, so what? It, so, watching the. No, I won't talk about. So, you were on some show yesterday. I heard about. Um, yeah, you were talking about. You realized that it, that it wasn't for you. Um, you know, you were a better. You know, at, at, at helping people cut weight. You're better cutting weight right, for yourself right. than fighting. So, right. so at what point did you say, you know, hey, this is, I'm done. What was your last fight? Uh, was it uh, four years ago? Yeah, four or five years ago. Yeah, so you said ago. I'm sick of getting my ass kicked, and like uh, I'm I'm gonna let help yeah. someone else. It was funny, like I never got TKO, never got knocked out, but uh, like my last fight, I was uh, in the back paying bills, like I, I'm checking my taxes and stuff like that, paying stuff, and, I, and it kind of hit home. Like I remember when I first started fighting, um, you could have been like, man, you're going bankrupt, you're, you know, your lights are off. But I, if I would have won the fight, I was like, you know, I won the fight. Right. Nothing else in life matters. Um, and then towards the end, it's like, hey man, like you lost the fight, but you got a good payday. And mm-hmm. I've been like, okay, and that's when I kind of, kind of knew, like, you know what, this fighting, you've got to be all in. It's got to be everything, and, and it just wasn't that way. How, how much weight? So you, you said you went from heavyweight to to welterweight. Yeah, yeah, I went to heavyweight, light heavyweight, middleweight, and then finished off with welterweight. So how did you say, okay, this is. You know, I, I become good at this. How much were you cutting, though, for these fights? Oh, bro. 50, and who was helping you? <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> man. You know, I was like, well, this, uh, if I don't eat and I don't drink anything, I sit in a sauna, water comes off, you know? And, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was bad back in the day. Yeah, great, and then, yeah, great system. Bro, it was, it was very effective, right? Very effective. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, heavyweight, and, then, you know, it was funny because I, I got on the false thing, pretenses that, like, if I get, you know, to a lower weight class, I'll perform better. Yeah, uh, 185 was my magic, my magic number, and then um, yeah, 170 was. We well, see some of these guys now are killing themselves. Like, how can you, like, you know, get had to be helped onto the scale and stuff? Right. How do these guys possibly, you know, just going down one weight class? How is that going to be, you know, beneficial compared to what you're giving up to cut that weight? Yeah, you know, that, that's part of my job too. Like a lot of guys call me like, hey man, do what? Should I go down a weight class? When I was, uh, me and Brian Stan were really good friends and uh, you know, he was the WC world champion and then UFC bought him out. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he got to UFC, oh. obviously- um, Chicks don't like him out here. Yeah, dude, I mean, he's ugly. Yeah. Not very smart, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian Stan for Steve Catwell, guy who trained with us and us yeah. went to get it ready. Oh Brian shit, Stan. that's Steve, right. one kick gym, buddy. That's Steve, right, buddy. I remember you first, yes, bro. Son of a bitch. I, I told you. I knew I knew that. Yeah. Bro, yeah. I told you. Hey, we beat Brian once and he beat us once. Yeah. They fought a third fight. Yeah. And Brian got the decision in which Steve won that fight. But Brian Stan's a cool guy. I got love for Brian. Enough. <laughs> every every fighter's got that other fighter that made him. You know what I mean? Steve yeah. Cantwell was the one that made Brian. Yeah. It's like you you get in this rivalry where it's like he takes you to a place that yes. Steve was his. You know, yeah. I think uh, Nate is Connors, and but anyway, so on so forth. Steve's doing well too right now. So, He's making money. I'm he has sure. uh, that marijuana thing going on. He has a big company out here. <laughs> Jeff's a big investor in that. So but, so yeah, he's. Big ups to Steve Kevwell. He's not. He's not going. He's living a good life right now. So your guy, Kevin. What is Kevin at his heaviest? Kevin walks at his heaviest. I say 195. Oh my god. So 195 god. to 155. Kevin but but he's he's 85 all the time. Yeah. 
that's yeah, that's not on our man. Most fifty fivers nowadays, yeah, they're they're two hundred, two hundred plus, man. Like, uh, I'm like, where you at, man? You know what I mean? Like, if I have like a considerable amount of time, we can do some stuff. You know what I mean? What, like, what do you what do you consider a considerable amount of time? Eight well, weeks, ten well, weeks. Well, see, like Drew Dober, I'll tell you, it's like Drew Dober, James Jack. We were in the link, and like between both of us, sixty pounds in three days. Like, like Drew Dober showed up <laughs> in California, wow. bro. California, the the state athletic commission, they're like calling, like, bro, he's one hundred eighty five fucking pounds it's Tuesday. He's got to win 155 by Friday. That's three days. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like once you once you get to, like once you understand the body system, that's the problem. Like when I, uh, you know, like obviously, man. I mean, with me talking, my voice stuff like that, I don't sound the most like something that you know, like, I don't know if I want to cut away with this. <laughs> yeah. That's probably because you smoke two packs a day. That's <laughs> why you're <laughs> crazy. I don't smoke. I've never smoked. It's crazy. <laughs> Dude, like you start talking about the system of the body, man, you start realizing like, okay, there's certain systems in your body that make you whole water. Like I was telling people, your body doesn't have a fucking brain. If it knew you, you know, if, you, if your body did have a brain, it knew that you'd go to the store anytime you freaking wanted and buy food. If it knew that, there'd be no reason to hold on to body fat, right? So there's certain negative feedback signals that we can override. Same thing with water. First stimulus, you step out in the desert, what happens? You start sweating, right? Why? Because your body's hot. And then all of a sudden, your body's like, oh shit, there's no water oh, coming in. There. There's another system in the bottom. You have something called the renin aldo- uh, angiotensin aldosterone system, right? And then you have something called ADH, which is anti diuretic hormone stuff. We learn to override that stuff by doing simple things, basic things, natural things. Um, and it keeps the person pinned, you know what I mean? And then they make water loading. Is what water loading is one very minuscule aspect of it. Like the big ones are going to be the vasopressin and the, and the uh, aldosterone, those specific hormones in the body. Oh, yeah. shit. Bro. Knowledge. Let me That's knowledge. Oh, oh, there's a reason. There's a reason George why is the man. George Lockhart oh, is the ambassador of Ripper Nutrition for our Okay, FBI okay. <laughs> okay. How much, I, did, how much did you cut? Listen, any guy says to some of those guys. Any guy says water loading is a small percentage of it, I'm sitting there like, holy shit, I'm gonna say whole new world. So you never cut anything. That's all we know, that, water load. I'm always that big detail. What do you think about that, Jordan? He doesn't cut anything. He fights at his weight. Bro, Boss Rube, I remember when I went on the inside of MMA, Boss Rube was like, what? What is this cutting weight? You just walk in and you fight, right? And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, man, that worked out well for you, man. But, <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy, got this got this. the first yeah, time right. I talked to him, you know, somebody told me, it was a close friend of mine, he said, man, this guy is a genius. I think he just reads I'm waiting for a guy with glasses, yeah. Yeah. bifocal, got so a lot of so on fucking YouTube. He puts yeah. him on the phone. Hey, man, yo, what's up? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he got the wrong number. <laughs> 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 I'm some punchy guy, man. I can't even understand what he's saying. When he starts talking, I'm telling you what, talk to Coach Kavanaugh. Connor's coach, he yeah. said, we will never do another coach without George Lockhart. We'll never do another camp without George Lockhart. How much? The guy is a genius at what he does, and I'm saying that to him, to his face, and I appreciate, I appreciate guys, whether you are a waiter, or a janitor, or a doctor, if you are great at what you do, you take so much pride in it, and you're, you're phenomenal, I respect that more than anything. What, what did you cut, Jeff? <laughs> yeah. Um, what, did, what did you cut? What, wait? Yeah. I never had to cut more than 10 pounds. Yeah. Is there, where's the, I mean, you talk about boss, but that was... You know, in the a long time ago, what's the? But you're talking about these huge weight cuts. Where's the the happy medium to, to diminishing returns? Right. You know. Right. So. Does it depend on the individual. Yeah. You know, typically, <laughs> like you, you find out, like you can basically break down the body, like you know, in terms of water. Our body's seventy percent water, depending on how how lean you are. Um. So, once we uh, once we start working with the individual. We basically take out, you know, okay, how much lean muscle mass this individual holds. Like a lot of people think that an individual is, you know, let's say they're 10% body fat. You know, I used this analogy the other day, but if uh, an individual is 200 pounds or 10% body fat, it means they're 180 pounds of lean body mass. Now, of that 180 pounds, only about 40% of that is lean muscle tissue. Each kilogram of lean muscle tissue holds on to 13 grams of glycogen. Each gram of glycogen holds on to 3 grams of water. Who the fuck's he that? talking to? That's yeah. my yeah. 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 So what's the know, Jack? This is the amount of glycogen that this individual holds. That Does he make a test on his so later, that's 30, 13 times 3, 39. Right. So per, per pound? Per, yeah, per, so what? So here's, here's the kicker. So now, you drop 20 pounds, so when you're, when you're training, when you're training individuals, you're like, okay, how much, how much glycogen does this individual hold? Okay, so let's say if I took, I took your body, I get your lean muscle tissue, it holds 13 grams, 
per kilogram. Yes. And then each gram of that holds on to three grams of water. Now that helps me in two ways. Number one, when you're cutting weight, I know exactly how much water is coming from the lack of carbohydrates. You you know as well as I do, if I cut carbs, what happens? You lose an initial I mean, Yeah, but you also lose an initial amount of water. This is right? Fascinating right? shit, isn't it? So yeah. but here's the thing. <laughs> when I reload the individual, <laughs> right? He just hit this guy with some real knowledge. So I, I'm telling you. Dude, and I, I would write down the formula right here. Like, I always tell people like Everything's a formula. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, Lockhart, it's a formula. Nah, man, everything we do is mathematical. It's yeah. mathematical, and I'll show you why. But so once I find out the, the amount of lean muscle, uh, lean muscle tissue, the amount of glycogen that's hold on, 20, we had 20% because 20% more is, is based on your liver. Your liver holds that amount of glycogen too. So I add those numbers up. So somebody your, your size would probably be about 550 grams of glycogen. Now, glycogen is how our body holds car- carbohydrates, stores it for energy, right? Yes. So if I, if I know my body holds 550 grams of glycogen, that lets me know when I weigh in Friday, I have to have a minimum of this amount of carbohydrates by the time I fight. A lot of people think that that's easy. It's very difficult because um, not only yeah. not your body can only process a certain amount of carbohydrates per per, uh, oh, per minute and shit like that. But but here's the thing that we also talk about. I was talking about transporters. You have some. You have glute one through glute five, S glute one, S glute two. These are transporters in the body, yeah. right? And S glute two is a sodium dependent transporter. So you activate it by using intake of so. sodium. Glute five is a fructose emitted uh, sure. transporter. Glute four is an insulin depend, uh, emitted. So if you activate all three of them at the same time, your body can more. Two point three grams per minute. That almost oh. du- that more than doubles, right? Whoa. Well, that's yeah. stupid. Oh, sorry. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. fucking yeah. with you. I'm fucking with you. Hey, that's oh, stupid, bro. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so hey. basically, hear me out. What he's saying is that yeah, you can be fully fucking recovered that next day. <laughs> Hang on, wait a second. The most important right. thing is, what do you give your athletes to recover on? What formula do you give them to recover on after the weight cut? To rehydrate. Jeff, how's your S two? Like actual How's your S two? Yeah, like supplements. Is there a company or anything that you have product that you take? I do. I will. I will say we do. We use Ripper Nutrition. A lot of it is due to the fact that prior to military, military. We'll cut that out. <laughs> yes. Besides, uh, what's the shit the kids drink? The little babies with it with a dehydrated uh, Pedialyte. 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 I asked him, how was your S food too? Rip Nutrition has Pedialyte. Five categories. <laughs> Listen, it's like, it's I told you, Kevin Lee needs this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every he, athlete he needs this guy. You, you, I think you said your goal is to work with every single guy, and he was making right. it mandatory. But well, we have over 200 <laughs> in the UFC right now. It's, so. it's, it's math. It, 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 it's just science. Yes. It's who science. who who is an absolute beast when it comes to cutting weight? I mean, who is like doesn't complain? Is just a, a, a monster when it comes to that. Khabib's a gangster cutter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Holly Holm is yeah. okay. Like some people, you gotta get a, like give them a little bit of a push. Some people you gotta pull the reins back. Yeah. She's one that she had to pull the ring. Be like, get out, get out of the bath. Yeah, come out. She's like, no, I said twenty. I'm doing twenty. You're like, no, you know, like there's, there's a, uh, there's a lot of things that we have to watch out for. You know, in terms of like, <laughs> sound without sound authority, like bar receptors in the body when blood pressure drops too fast, or uh, we got to keep an eye on that. But for a fighter like her, this is what made you know May was so good at what she did. She said, I said twenty. If I get out before 20, it's going to fuck up my head. Yeah. I was like, that's why you're... Were, were you with her when she fought uh, Ronda? Yeah, well, I was the one that... Well, I did a reload when I, she fought Ronda. Like, I did. I was the one that... They, they called me up to, like, hey, rehydration and shit like that's that. That's Dewey's best prediction right there. That's when he likes to go back because he called that one. I knew she was going to get Ronda. Because I, I didn't tell the world I had a little inside track. My fighter had sparred Ronda Rousey twice. Oh, shit. And you guys don't need to know what happened, but, you know... This is just the food. What do you do? What? The food? I'm the food dude. The food, the food dude. dude. <laughs> he's the food dude. Who, I'll tell you who, what, he's now, brilliant. He's brilliant. Now, who, who needs a, every trick in your book to get them to do what they have to do to lose the weight? Hey. Throw a couple people under the bus for us. No, I mean, honestly, um... They do it right, and they're gonna be on schedule. Right, I can tell. Those guys, man, after they work with us once, dude, they, they follow us for the entire camp, and it's a lot easier. Um, I'm trying to think. The last, like, the ones that are really, really difficult. I will say Vic. This is a, a tough one. He's 6'4", he fights at 155. Yes. Uh, me and him wow. are really close because of this, because this dude, he makes me work for every damn dollar that I make. <laughs> uh, when, you, when you're six foot four, it's like you can't lose like, like, like from bone, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, yeah, he definitely, he, he pulls things out. He likes to come in a little heavy, but. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the DVD of Cyborg that one time she was trying to make weight and then yeah, kill yeah, herself. Yeah, yeah. I was what? standing right next to her. I'm, oh, so you'll see me right there. So you were part of that. Great. Uh, what what happened? Why was it so difficult? Just too much muscle mass? Yeah, the way you wanted to go 140? 
Yeah, it was, it, we yeah. got her down to that one was actually 139 pounds. Why though? I don't. There's they wanted <coughs> they wanted the super fight with her and. Um, but but Ronda never said she was gonna go up, right? She said no. She, that's why that they were bringing trying to get her to 35. Her down to 35. See if she can get down to 35. Right. So I kept. So you were a part of that, huh? Yeah, I was. I was definitely. I was part of that. I was. I worked with her for a couple of years. Um, you know, it's just it, it was tough. You know. In terms of athleticism, I've never worked with somebody so athletic in my life. I told you that. And you I trained Cyborg before. Bro. And she, she, you know, I, I told you guys, Cyborg's whole other level. Whole other yeah. level. But, but a lot of muscle mass, so yeah. how was it trying to get that weight down? She would, she would do like 10 miles a day, yes. man, like running and stuff. And then, like, you'll appreciate, like, a lot of people would be like, oh, so and so's a beast and stuff. They'll see it from the outside. But when you look at numbers, like, I remember the first time I put a heart rate monitor on this girl, she was like walking around. I give her caffeine, she's about to work out. She was in the 40s. And she looks at me like, is that, is that bad? Is that good? I'm like, oh, so holy old. crap, man. This is insane. So then the thing is, the crazy 40s part. 40s or 140s? 40. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, and this is her walking around, bro. And here's the crazy part. You guys, and you appreciate it as a trainer, but like, what we do, <clears throat> I, I got something from uh, Eric DeGrati. DeGrati, oh, God. I'm gonna, he's going to kill me. But he's at a performance institute in, in New Jersey. And he does something called spike training, right? You know, so it's like it's like lifting heavy weights. When you lift heavy, like if you want to get stronger, you can't go boom, 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 and then get off and then try to do it again. You have to rest. You gotta let the ATP, you know, kind of basically yeah. build back up. Well, the thing is with spike training, <laughs> I never let my ATP rest long enough. That's my problem. <laughs> so, so what happens is like that's what the problem that, is. That's a son of a whole problem. When you uh, when you do inter- interval training, you're not actually letting the body rest fully. So like. If, if your heart rate goes down, at a, like let's say you need 30 seconds because your heart rate got back down to a sp- specified number, then you need 30 seconds. And the better the better shape you get in, yes. the, uh, yes. the faster it goes back down. And that's important because when you Recovery. get an exchange, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yes. So she would get up, I shit you not, you're gonna be like, George, you're full of shit. 199, she could work at 199, bro. Like, okay, there's so many people that are like, oh, the heart rate up 200, dude. 99% of people freaking die, like yeah. literally die, like yeah. hurt, like. Yeah. She's grinding it out, and I'm sitting there like, holy crap. And then, like, she sits down, and I got to see, like, okay, we, we, what we'd have her do is get back down to 135, because that's about average, like, somebody walking into the cage about 135 beats per minute. She'd sit down, kind of look at me, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to fucking tell her, like, sorry, back down 135. Like, bro, you got to go, you got to do it all over again. Like 15 she's, second recovery. She's like, like this, and like, because, you know, other people would take, like, two minutes for them to get their heart rate back down that low. So... And uh, she'd run like, I mean, 10 miles a day. She trained two, three times and stuff. There was definitely like, there's some overtraining. There's, there's some things that, like that. Like it wasn't always the most conducive, but in terms of athleticism, that yeah, woman work and work. Uh, yeah, what would yeah. you, switching topics a little bit, my friend Jeff over here needs help. I, I'm not a very good nutritionist, obviously. <laughs> Jeff suffers from diabetes. He actually told me this the other you day. Too. I know, but I didn't do this. <laughs> he asked for both of But check this out. What the fuck are you talking about? So we stopped to eat. We stopped to eat. The first thing he does is start pouring the salt out. Pouring the salt down? Out. What? Looking for salt to put on his french fries. <laughs> yeah, man. So then he goes, I said, it's I mean, bad for you. Know. You be quiet for a second. Okay. He says, he says, I said, what are you doing? He said, he honestly thought because sugar is good, is bad, that salt must be okay. Right. Well, they, they add burns. Well, <laughs> the opposite. I mean, that, that doesn't make logical sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What you do to me? So tell him. I, he, I think he needs to write a book. I, I definitely, I'd read it. I, mean, I, I definitely, I'd read it. I'd be like, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> but uh, George will be working with Badu for the next fight. Yes. We're not going to get the advice for Jeff? I, I don't think, that. I think it's going to take a whole other show. Yeah, I mean, by the way, <laughs> one reason I'm undefeated as a fighter, because I, I look at people's ears and I would never fuck with a dude like this. Yeah. Because when you see the ears like that, you know you better not fuck with them, right, dude? No, no, you just know you better not get yeah. fucking close. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, our eyes popped open. That's that's not you know, boxing is a little bit different. Yeah. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna play around with it. And we we the one thing that I do great, not to compliment myself, but oh, I sure. I surround myself with the best. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you must know. confess. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm all sure. the rest. That. Uh, but but <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you boxers are gonna make George George's life like heaven. They, uh, hey George, they're gonna call you and say, I gotta lose eight pounds. I got two weeks. Are they going to burp? Oh, what a one. Give me a burp for the hiccup. You should be good at <laughs> These guys are freaking out. They're five days. pounds up bro. a week and a half away. They're yeah. freaking the fuck out. I'm like, bro, if one of my MMA fighters like Kevin was yeah, MMA, was so 15 yeah. pounds up. You know, two weeks happy. before, he he be like, I'm I'm underweight. You yeah. know, what I mean? in general though, aren't yeah. wrestlers? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna be like yeah. 15 pounds over, and I'd be like. But wrestlers cut more usually quicker and more weight total than your basic stand-up fighters. Even yeah, it's just because of the culture of wrestling. Because of the way they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they same they way is yeah. in a fight. They've been doing yeah. since they were kids. I will tell you, wrestlers are the hardest people for me to work with, though. Just because they already they, know it's been ingrained in them, so they they'll they'll, they'll cut they water out them. early. They they yes. stop eating like they don't realize to lose a pound, you would have to be at a deficit of thirty-five hundred calories. And it's just a numbers game. So to lose yeah. ten, you'd have to be at a deficit of thirty-five thousand. It's not about the amount of food that you're eating. It's all water that we're losing. And you have to feed them. Like when, when we start and they trust us, they're like, dude, I get to eat all this food. Like, yeah, man, it's not a caloric thing. It's a, it's a water thing. It, it, God, let's say it's three, three or four fights from the end of your career. You sat, were sitting over there listening to yourself now. <laughs> talking Bro. like that, cutting weight. Oh, yeah. Would it be surprising that the way you talk? I'd, yeah, way? I'd be slapping myself. I'd be like, dude, when did you turn into a dirty? Like, I'm a nerd, bro. <laughs> I know, you know I, what I mean? <laughs> like, I was all about, like, fighting. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought I was pretty smart, so I said, next to me, what the hell are you talking about? How did you learn all this? Man, you know, honestly, so, like, everybody's like, where's your degree? And this, dude, 100% freaking Google, YouTube. Like, <laughs> I, I, will, I will say this, that, like, People are like, well, you know, we have people that, you know, like we have Tristan Kennedy in Ireland. Like we, we're global. Like it's, it, you know, like we have Lockhart and Lease all over the world. We got one in Australia, one in, and they're they're registered dietitians, right? You know why they're registered dietitians? It's because of legality. Like you talk to a fucking dietitian and say, okay, I got to lose thirty pounds in three weeks. The dietitian is gonna look at you like, that's right. impossible. You know what I'm saying? This is a whole nother level of like science. Um, and in terms of performance, okay, now not only do I have to, to uh, take the weight off, now you Make have to perform the next yeah. day. Right. And um, we went with doctors, like we went with Dr. Dr. Kenefick, who's uh, he's, he's, uh, he's got an oral re- or, uh, a PhD in oral rehydration, been doing it for 30 years in the military. Like the guy, I mean, he's got the coolest job, but I think the last time we talked to him, he was like, yeah, man, he was like 10,000 feet up working with some some soldiers trying to see what dehydration did at 10,000 feet. Wow, like, wow. Yeah, like, dude, Elevation like, dehydration. Just so random. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I was up on a fucking mountain right now. But, um, but yeah, you know, now we, we, we've kind of learned. We took a lot of stuff from the World Health Organization and realized that their oral rehydration standards, they didn't work mm-hmm. um, for fighters because fighters aren't actually as dehydrated as a lot of people think. Mm-hmm. Um, we can get into that all science later on, but yes. I don't think anybody wants. So to. George also, you touch on it, his company is Lockhart and Leaf, which is um, aside from them actually working with fighters and getting them ready for the weight cut and then the rehydration, they actually certify nutritionists across the country. So they hold clinics and they hold seminars where they actually certify these guys and they teach them their system. Mm-hmm. So um, I mean, I'm they're. Not the- be a student. Of that. That's what yeah. I learned just for mm-hmm. for self knowledge. That's that's. They awesome. have a tremendous mm-hmm. system. Tremendous system in there, you know. Hopefully, very soon they'll be coming out with a with a line of uh, their own supplements and everything. It'll be great. Yes. Oh man, and we went long again. What? So we went long again, yeah, man. I know. It's man, it's you're dropping all the damn science. I know. <laughs> fucking me up over here. What the fuck are you saying? ATP <laughs> level. I know. I was saying. I don't know why. That was my problem. I know. I won't talk to you. So here's the thing. I don't. I eat perfectly. I train like a mad dog, but my ATP levels are fucked up. Yeah, you you my, pulled out off your level. Yeah, yeah, that was it. I, I was That's on the situation. Your levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes.